Hi, my name is Carl and I'm showing you a quick overview of the Smart Setup software. This is the initial screen you're faced with. You can see we've got options here for opening a setup from file, reading one from an attached device, opening to the main interface of the software and even launching an older version of our software. I should maybe pause here and first discuss exactly what is a setup. The GSM command is like a computer and just like any other computer it needs a program to work. The setup that we create using Smart Setup is the program that the GSM commander runs. It tells the commander exactly what to do. Unlike other computer systems, the GSM commander is surprisingly easy to program and today I'm going to show you the basics of how to do that. So without further ado, let's go and create a new setup. I'm just going to open to the main screen because obviously this is not an existing setup. Just click right there. And this is what our software looks like. Here at the top we've got a couple of buttons. These blue ones allow us to read an existing setup either from a connected device or from a file. And the red ones allow us to write a setup either to your device or to a file. Obviously when you change your setup you need to save to the device or else your changes will not be there. Moving right along you'll see we have a tabbed interface here allowing us access to all the functions of the software. The first that we're going to look at is the numbers. Obviously here we have a list of telephone numbers for users on the system. The first one is the administrator and we don't have to worry about adding a whole list here because we can add numbers on the fly during our setup and I'll show you just now. The second tab is for messages. Typically these are sent or received to or from the device as SMS. It can also be sent via GPRS. And just like the phone numbers, these can be set up on the fly. And this list is just for your um, convenience. And now for the interesting part. This is where the behavior statements happen. This is where we tell the device what exactly to do. Each line represents a behavior statement and we can edit any one by just clicking on it. And that brings up our behavior statement editor. Each statement simply consists of an if and a then. You'll see if I click here, I've got a whole list of options for if. You'll see all kinds of trigger conditions. And at the bottom, I just pair it with an appropriate action. And that's all there is to it. So let's do a very simple example where we say, if an input goes active for longer than a certain period, then we would like to send a message to a few recipients. So first things first, we need to select an if condition. You see we got a whole list of them here and obviously we're going to try and look for something to do with an input. You'll notice the software takes you by the hand and the first question it asks is what input are we talking about? Now obviously we're going to look at input 1 today. The next thing we need to do is to select what exactly is this input supposed to do in order for this statement to trigger. And you see we've got a, quite a few options and obviously we're going to have to go and look for if it goes active remaining active for longer than a certain period. Now when we select that, the next question obviously is what exactly is that period? In our case we're just going to use 5 seconds. So here we have our completed if or trigger condition for this very first statement. To summarize, if input 1 goes active, remaining active for longer than 5 seconds, then the commander will do this action. Now you will recall our action was to send a message to some recipients. So we look through the list and lo and behold there we have an option for sending a message. We'll just select a plain message for now and we'll select to send it by SMS to some specific recipients. Now we also need to select the message. We have no messages defined so we'll just say new. And here we have a dialog where we can type in our message and we're just going to go ahead and say uh, the input was activated. You'll see we've got another few options here at the bottom for some advanced messaging. But we'll come back to that in a future video. For now, we'll just say done. And there we have our message. And lastly, we need to select our recipients. You see we've got space for six of them. And we'll just go here. You'll see we haven't, haven't had any of them defined. So again, we'll just create a new one. And let's do Stephen. Oh, shocks. I forgot uh, this is supposed to be the number. I'll put a number in there right now, say so, OK, and then I'll call this guy Steven. And then I'll do another one, perhaps, uh, I think this was Susan I'm going to add now. Uh, let's put in a number, and Susan, and say OK, and then we got two recipients. So there we have our completed statement. Very simple, if input 1 goes active, remaining active for longer than 5 seconds, 
then we'll send a message and there it is the input was activated and we'll send it to Steve and Susan and now we click done and it brings us back to our main screen and we can see the statement if input 1 goes active remaining active for longer than 5 seconds then saying the input was activated via SMS to Steve and Susan very very simple now that's just one statement and quite a simple one at that. It's quite obvious that by pairing interesting combinations of ifs and thens you can create some very interesting applications and you can add statements until you're almost blue in the face. In the end, the only limit here is your own imagination.